that's it, the coals are warming up. Sunday afternoon, no Reliant video today. This is a little bit of a vlog. I've been having a little look around at a local car show and we've also, I'll show you what we've been tinkering about with here. See you in a minute. Right, well, as you know, it's been a lovely weekend here in the UK and uh, basically nothing's really happened. I've had a few jobs to do in the house. Have a little baby. Come here, Sharon's here, look. I'm a mess. Hey, come on, baby. Look. I'm she's, a mess. She's been busy, she's been working indoors. We've been, we've had to cook her out. We've been doing a bit of uh, housekeeping, so to speak, like pulling cupboards out and stuff like that. And uh, so that's why she's a little bit raggedy at the moment. But as I say, then we went. Good to her uh, due this morning. And you, you wanted a Barbie baby, didn't you? Didn't you? Not cook. She couldn't be bothered to cook. No, it's not. That's, the coal's burned down, baby. They've got to go grey. Don't worry about that. I'm in full control of that. Well, anyway, so I was all planned to do the uh, Reliant video this weekend. And there's a few things I need for the Reliant. Now, you know, I'm going to put the new brake pipes on. In fact, let me take you out the front and show you. Come with me. Right, well, as you know, we've got the. Uh, Reliant back with the axle now, that's as we left our last Reliant video. This ain't a Reliant video, by the way. And I went down to Jimmy's unit and I pulled out the uh, the brake pipes, which the, the gentleman who had it before me obviously has put in. But as you can probably see, they're, they're just sort of hand bent. And to be honest with you, you can do a lot better than that. It's a little bit crushed, crushed in places there, for example, look, as you can probably see. And I don't really want to put these back on. So I've got some brake pipe, which I'm gonna make up myself. And as you know, this is the uh, the only joint in the, the actual system now. And we've got the main master cylinder over that side. But I'm gonna put new clips along in. I haven't actually got them, so I've got to order them. And while I'm running uh, the new brake line down that side, I thought I might as well get a new petrol pipe as well that goes all the way down from the back there to the front of the Regal. So that's gotta be done. I've also got the prop shaft and the fuel tank over there, which I'm gonna start working on. So I've got all the new joints for the prop shaft, which I've just tucked under the trunk for claim there, as you can probably see. So those are the things I'm gonna to have to order. That's why we haven't got a Reliant video this weekend. Also, let me go, let's, get, let's go back to the garden. My mate Lee conked out in his Trans Am the other day, and he was driving along and it just bought, cut out, and I had to tow him back with my old transit van. So I've been investigating that problem on there as well. That's another reason why I haven't, done the uh, uh, Regal video and what we've traced that down to it looks like his ignition module which is mounted in the distributor or on just under this the distributor uh, in them 5.7 litre Trans Am engines he, he, I think he's a 1992 model so um, it's a great big lump and the distributor is right at the back of the engine and you have to really stretch and actually lay on the engine I don't know how they managed to do it out in the States when they're working on them uh, sort of things all the time as well. So that's another thing. So we're waiting for parts for that one. I didn't film none of that because I was only just going around to help him out and I got involved with it and then before we know it, we're, we're needing parts. So that's the Trans Am. So, but Gary's also been doing a bit as well. So let's show you what Gary's picked up, basically as scrap. And with a little bit of ingenuity and a little bit of work and a bit of common sense and investing a little bit of money, these are the sort of things where you can actually turn around and possibly make a little bit of money as well. So let's show you what Gary's actually bought over the last few days and uh, we'll show you what he's actually done to him. With me, I've played a little part in that, haven't I? Look, he's worn out now, look. Hey? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's go and have a look. Right, so these are three things that we've been working on. And again, these were all not working. They weren't running. Uh, basically, they were scrap. So he paid a nominal amount for them and uh, we thought we can try and work, get them working with our knowledge and expertise, what we got. Basically tinkering about. And this is what we've got first. So we've got this little, it's a, I think it's a Simjet, one of these Chinese motorbikes based on a, a an old, uh, either a Honda CG125 or a Yamaha something or other. I can't remember exactly the ones they're based on now. But um, this totally non-running, rust in the fuel tank, covered in rust loads of problems it had with it. Let's just show you what we actually had to do with it so far. We've had to spend some, or Gary's had to spend some money on it. This is the, the, the forks that was actually on it. And I don't know whether you can see or not. Down where the business end is. I mean, these are just never gonna pass an MOT with that rust and pit in there. And uh, not only that, I don't know if you can actually see or not. 
that it's obviously had some sort of front end impact. As you can see, they're both basically bent as well. So um, we had to take them off and that was a beating devil's own job as well. We basically got a second hand set and uh, as you can see, we've put them on. And as you can see, these ones are in absolutely lovely condition as well. So we've got them put on. This was all rusty. This exhaust here was literally full of rust. We was going to paint it black, but he uh, got the wire brush to it and um, was able to sort that out and bring it back to some sort of luster anyway. Quick coat of engine paint, engine enamel on the engine. Again, all these little, little jobs all add up at the end of the day. The exhaust stud was stripped there, so we had to re-tap a thread in there. Coming through to the back of the vehicle here, I don't know whether you can actually see in there or not, but the rear swinging arm all along here was totally rusted and full of holes and underneath and on top. But I was eight to, we took the swinging arm out and basically what I've done is I've welded in a new plate going all around there. So now that's, that can get an MOT now. But as I say, failing that, we would have actually got another one off of eBay. But that was another thing which we had to do as well. Again, after taking the uh, carburetor off and the fuel bowl, let's go around the other side. I mean, this thing was just literally full of uh, rust, rust and rusty water and stuff. And uh, we also took the carb off as well. That went in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner and we cleaned all the jets up on that. And again, uh, that's now working fine. We still got to trim up the carbs. These are in now for not ticking over very evenly or smoothly when they start off from cold. So we're still looking into that one, basically. Uh, Gary's also had a problem with the front brake was sticking on. So we've actually taken the caliper off. That's all been ultrasonic cleaned as well. We've got a new master cylinder come or a replacement master cylinder come on there because that's actually gone as well. And there's various chips and dents and bits of uh, stuff that needs doing cosmetically as well. And this is one of the reasons why you can pick these sort of bikes up dirt cheap. Like, as I say, when they're non-runners and they've got this amount of problems, they're basically uneconomical to repair because something like this master cylinder here for the front brake, you can buy them for about 45 pounds second hand. We was lucky, we got one really, really cheap. Uh, around five pounds and you know you, you've, you've got to be quick and you've got to know where to look and it's all about a little bit of investigation finding these little things these like little nuggets doing or going one step further what mr and mrs average won't do or they'll just go to a shop and buy a brand new one of these for 147 pounds so if you had to spend 147 pounds on one of them you had to spend money on a brand new carb again which is another hundred odd pounds you had to get a new swinging arm. You're looking at, I don't know how much, about 60, 80 quid or something like that. Before you know it, it becomes un uneconomical to repair and worth more than what the vehicle's worth. At the moment, with the money that you've spent on this, Gary, what does it actually stand you in at the moment? With bearing in mind, you've already bought the master cylinder for dirt cheap, and we've done the other work, like the welding ourselves and stuff like that, cleaning of the carb. So what do you actually, what money have you spent on it so far? So he spent about 55 pounds. That's for the forks, the master cylinder, and a few odds and sods, basically. So 55 quid, he's invested into this, which was basically a worthless bike. And we, as I say, he got it for basically nothing, so to speak. And once we've tinkered about it, we've got a bit of bodywork to do, and I'm gonna actually respray this as well. Again, it's just our time. We've got the materials. It don't, it don't cost anything for us to do that. But the end result should have this uh, as a reliable little runner. Handy will also put an MOT on it and uh, hopefully it'll bring a, a, a nice little profit for him. So that's that. Where are you going, baby? Sharon's coming. Oh, yeah, she's walking her rhubarb. Look, come on. She's, you're still growing rhubarb, are you? Well, we've had this for years and years, haven't we? Yeah. And you sit, you saw it sitting there, and you thought, I'm going to little put. You're going to plant it in this raised bed here, aren't you? Yeah. We're not really doing no more growing, baby, I'm are doing we? Smart plants out the front. You're doing tomato plants out the front. Right. I like my fresh tomatoes. You've got them two trees which we've got to plant. And yeah, and we've got big raspberry bushes coming raspberry on. Raspberry bushes coming on. But as I say, over there, we've cut down the big Christmas tree, which we'd had for 16 years. It was getting a bit too big. And we told Jimmy, because we actually we actually put that up there when Jimmy was a little nipper, didn't we? And he's been with him. Now Jimmy's 20. We've said he can take a pick out of that pear tree or the plum tree. So we're going to put the pear, pear tree, the pear tree in its place over there. It's been sitting in that container there for about two years. Right, so now on to number two project. Again, a non-worker, needed some work doing to it. What does it do? Oh, 10 miles an hour. 10 miles an hour. He's got the lights going on it, he's got the power running on it now. We've done a bit of investigation on it and got it going. This thing's actually running now, and actually I think you say you've got rid of this one now, haven't you? Yeah. So this one's now gone, but as I say, our time again has been invested in, and because we, we tinker about and we, we've got a logical approach to things, we know what we're doing, we basically sold it, and that's now uh, gonna be uh, uh, going. 
probably tomorrow. This little one over the back, again, similar sort of thing. Again, another non-runner. We've done a bit of work to it, back to the contacts and terminals and stuff like that. And uh, although this one's got a broken panel at the front there, let's show you, as you can probably see down now, um, we are probably going to maybe repair it. I'm not too sure yet, but uh, that's the, uh, the front of that one. But again, this one is now, we've got this one working and um, obviously that will be on the market pretty soon. But again, come to us as a non-runner and working from home, able to do this sort of stuff. And that's ideal. It's definitely in weather like this. So we'll just take you and show you uh, another little place now where we've got some other stuff which Gary's going to be working on. And uh, let's go and have a look, shall we? Yep. His workshop. Right, you might remember this as my polytunnel where we used to grow stuff, but obviously no longer. Uh, Gary's able to use this bit of area. Let's just show you the sort of stuff we got in here, which again, he's going to refurbish and uh, move on, hopefully. So we've got quite a few lawnmowers here, which we've got again, again, get moving. These were the ones that was up on the decking. So as I say, we've got these to sort out as well. And obviously we've got a, a, a myriad of uh, parts and bits and pieces here, stuff like that, which uh, obviously he's got to spend some time to do a bit of work on and all that. Uh, some of these have gone already. And those of you who know probably a bit about vehicles will know that uh, some of this stuff belongs to the old air-cooled Volkswagens there, as you can probably see. There's an old Austin, I think it was a, a Maestro or, or maybe a Mini Metro grill, something like that. Things like this old radio, for example, some people do sort of collect the old radios when they're refurbishing a car, putting it back to normal or standard or whatever. We've got a bit of work to do to that, as I say, but uh, again, it's stuff that we can do. And again, these old engines now, normally they, they go for scrap. They probably are seized up and stuff like that. But to anyone who's restoring a vehicle, you might find uh, that there might be something here which they might want, for example even down to this old uh, A-series engine, which I think was fitted to various British Leyland cars, including the Mini Metro, something like that. Uh, again, we don't know the condition of it, but it's just something he's got hold of. And uh, yeah, just a few little things here, which he's gonna be working on. And it's just nice to have them undercover, basically. So um, there's a little engineer from a Fiat, what was this, Jimmy, can you, Gary, can you remember? It was an 800, was it an 800 Spider or something? 850 Spider, something like that, quite a rare little lump, I think. I've never heard of one myself, personally. Little four-cylinder, as you can see there. But uh, again, stuff which someone may or, or may need somewhere down the line. So, uh, yeah, he's got a bit to do. So, he's got to get his finger out, not you? Yeah. So again, although we've still got more work to do, let's hear this thing start up. As you can see, pretty nice and quiet engine. But we just got to get the carb running right because tick over sometimes is a little bit fast and if you if you order to tick over it will cut out until it's warmed up a little bit typical problem with these these bikes you've got to get the carburetor really correct on these but uh, there you go it sounds all right doesn't it thing was that, that as it was it was scrap it's now going to be a usable bike that's where the fuel gauge was on that by the way under there Oh. No, that's uh, the glass is frosted up. Yeah, we we wonder because we took out take the, the tank out and drain it all out and clean it all out, and there was a fuel sender in there. And as I said to Gary, it's got to have a fuel gauge on here, but we couldn't obviously see it. But online, I did notice that the fuel gauge was there. So basically, that piece of glass there is frosted over. But underneath there is the fuel gauge. Whether or not we can do something about that, cut another piece of plastic glass in there, we might even try that. See stuff that you wouldn't normally do. Because to buy that will probably cost a lot of money if you had to buy the front of the clocks or whatever. But because we can, we'll tinker about it. We'll probably cut a new piece of glass in there just so that you can see the fuel gauge again. Anyway, let's have a look inside the log cabin and see what we got in there. Well, I don't know if you can see. It's a little bit tighter in here now. I can actually swing a cat in here now if I wanted to, look. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're doing a little bit of work on this. As I say, this was uh, smashed and broken. Had a big crack down this. All I've done is do a bit of plastic welding with one of these things, which is just a cable tie. For this type of plastic, it's working out fine. Some plastics, this won't even touch it. So it's worked out fine. And I've also put a skim of uh, body filler over the top of that as well. The fiberglass P40, that is, that's not uh, normal body filler. So it's got its strength back. And I've also put the uh, fiberglass on the inside as well. So this is now strong 
uh, uh, strong, probably stronger than what it was before. So it's got the fiberglass in the back there as well. I'll just finish off with a fine skim of filler over the top, like a top stop filler, it's like stopper filler basically. And then I'll, I'll, this has been rubbed down with 80 grit just in that area there. I'll then rub the whole thing down with probably uh, sort of 180 to 240. Then we'll prime it. Then we'll put a red base coat on and then clear over the top. And I'll do the same, exactly the same which we've done to this one. Again, side panel, had a problem there as well. Same thing, rubbed it down with 80. Uh, well, plastic welded it and filled it with uh, P40, which is a fiberglass filler, fiberglass reinforced filler. And that will do exactly the same as well. So from something like that, it will turn out and it'll look fantastic again. But again, you pay someone to do this stuff, it's gonna cost you a fortune. The bicycle, basically the bike would have been scrapped. So with me brakes on the Reliant Regal, I've got one of these little pipe bending machines there, as you can probably see there. And that's to get the nice radius. So I've not, uh, I think I used this once before. I can't remember what I used it on now, but uh, that's a little pipe bender. And I've also got a, a roll of piping. Hopefully, I've got, I'm hoping I've got enough now. I'll probably have looking at the length for that to do the whole of the Reliant Regal. You've only got one line from front to back and then one that goes over the top of the axle. And I've also got the flaring tools that flare the ends out and I've got a box of ends as well. So that's coming up on the Reliant video, the next one. But as I say, until, until we actually get some uh, pipe clips, the fuel pipe to go along the back, I couldn't do that today. Plus, as I say, I've had the, these other jobs to do. Well, anyway, I'm going to get outside now. I'm going to finish off the barbecue. It is a Sunday afternoon now. Well, it's actually five o'clock in the evening now. And start cooking our, our dinner come uh, late tea anyway. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And if you do like what we do, tell your mate, show someone else. And we'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now.